Yeah. Remember, the Lord told Peter, he said, Satan, Simon, Simon, Satan that desires to sift you is weak. But I have what? Prayed for you. He's with us. He'll get us to the end. If you go through some difficult things in your life, that's part of life. You can't escape it. What you need to remember is Christ is there with you. We'll get yeah, you through man. the difficult times and eventually bring you to a promised end. Yeah, Put your faith and trust in Him. That's the thing. All right. We're going to sing another song. They're going to have an offering. Then we're going to have uh, the group sing a special. Amen. All right. So 450 in the hymnal. And that's going to go along with my message today. 450 goes along with the message, which is going to be on love. By the way, happy Valentine's Day for those who partook. And that's why my message is on love. 450. Now, look, church, I got to preach, so I say my voice. I want to hear you sing the song. Sing it out. Don't be shy. 450. Let's go. One, two, and three. compels us to do what we do. Uh, it's the love of Christ, God that sent His Son to die at Calvary's cross. Yeah. That's God's love. And I'm going to talk about that today in my in the sermon today on love, what love is. It's agape yeah. love. Yeah. Well, Amen. You know, I'm going to give it to you from the Bible. I don't know about the agape love. We got, we got agape covered. But thank God. It is, the, it is that love that allowed the Father to send His Son and it's deep. We, you think about love is love is listen. Love is also emotional. Love is also sympathetic and compassionate. I'm going to cover that. A lot, love is a lot of components. Yes, I'm going to give you three main ones today. Not not there's others, but he's going to hold it down to three that I feel the most important, and we'll take it from there. But yes, it's uh, the Greek word agape love. And that's mm -hmm. deep. That's where it is. All right, let's uh, be seated. Have an offering, and then we're going to sing a special. Okay, who's gonna help out with the offering envelope back there? Well, all volunteer with Timmy. Let's go, Tim. Hey, raise your hand. Hey, me. He's getting big, this kid. Give this guy about. Give him about. 
Four, three, four more years. Uh, four more years. Don't pick on him now. Who remembers him? Four more years. You're not going to recognize this guy. And you really think I'm not a low one. Both of them. I raise your hand. I didn't know that. Thank you. Thank you. He was busy this morning. Yeah. Text me this morning. You're busy with mommy. Bro, I'm going to tell the church. Yeah. No, no, Rose's husband. Sometimes they Rose will text me in the morning, in my house in the morning, Ma Bernadette's with mommy getting her ready, and then I'm getting ready and trying to decide what I got to get here early. And I didn't mention to Bernadette Rose to text me early that her husband, Bill, who suffers with MRSA, also has had gout. So his toe was swollen, they were bad. Today woke up, his whole foot was inflamed. And if you know anything about gout, it's very painful. Very painful. My mom had gout in the past. So she, I don't know, what, he didn't want to go to the hospital. He didn't want to go, and I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know what they do for gout. What do they do? What do you give it, Doc? What do they give it at? What does that mean? Okay, it's oh, okay. And anti-inflammatories? <laughs> Change your diet. Change too. I know that. Yeah. Creams and negative, negative right. That. So, hopefully, they'll take care of me. And also pray for Sammy, uh, yeah. Josephine's son. I saw him Monday in Mather. We had a nice visit. Good. I had a nice visit with Reed. He opened up to me, told me about some of his personal burdens he's going through. And um, he said he's not. He's got Mercer. Yeah. His side was swollen, and uh, I didn't know. They didn't know that what it was. They said it wasn't cancer. No, that's negative. So they knew that was that's negative. But I did He showed me the side was a little swollen, and, yeah. and he was happy when the nurses came in. Josephine, he said, "This is my pastor." No. He right away identified him, and I prayed with him, you know, and I prayed for him that God would help him up, heal him up. He's, you know, just lost his wife a few weeks ago. And he's got what, four children. Yeah. Four. So he needs to get back on his feet and get out of there. He was antsy. He wanted to get out of there then. Yeah. But he can't, you know, when? Hopefully he'll be out soon. Whenever it clears. And, yeah. you know, they still want to give him a CAT scan. That's the next uh, test they're going to do. Sometimes that mercy stays in your system. Doesn't really. Yes, it does. Yeah. So we'll pray for him. That God have mercy on him. Thank um, you. And that's about it as far as the prayer requests go. And, uh, mommy's back. Thank God, Kitty's doing better. Amen. 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 Tuesday night, we got the class. Tuesday night class. We're off Tuesday night. And Could you just pray for Gianna? She's got an uh, infection and she's home. Okay. She'll be home for a little while. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Ava. Yeah, you can pray, pray for my grandmother. She's going to be 93 in a couple of weeks. Wow. Uh, she was just diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. What's she doing? Sorry to hear that. Yeah, 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 right, Grandma. She's still at the. Is she still at the nursing home? And now she's in the rehab in St. Catharines. Okay. Yeah, your Grandma. We know Grandma. It's been a while. Pancreatic cancer. When they did they discover that recently? Yeah, like within the last week. That's not a good sign. Well, I know you've had a lot of talks with over the years. And <clears throat> do you have peace with Grandma having prayed? Did she pray with you? She actually prayed with Rose. Yeah, did she? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard now because she's 93, so she goes back and forth. Yeah. She says, yeah. when you're done, you know, you're done, you're done. You don't yeah. know anything. I said, no, you're going to live forever. So I'm trying to bring her back to that. Good. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't put too much stock in, in you know, sometimes when you get older, and you, you, you're That's hurt. So you, you, right, exactly. It doesn't mean that it wasn't real. Right. Her prayer, her faith, her prayer wasn't yeah. genuine. Yeah. I know Rose spoke to her. That's good. Um, so that's all we could hope for. Mm -hmm. Pray, all right. All right. Let's uh, have a word of prayer now, Phil. Lead us an offering. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in church, Father God. And once again, Lord, and thank you for our church that gives the truth, Lord. And just pray that uh, you speak to all our hearts individually, and thank you that you're real to us here and. For those of us who need to meditate and pray and just spend a long time with you more, Lord, just put it on our hearts and thank you for the time you allowed me to carve out. Thank you for a pastor who promotes that, Lord, and does it. Thank you for the confirmations you give because the world is wicked and doesn't want to hear this, Lord. We all lay alone with our thoughts alone in bed at night and 
the loan for the most part during the day. And thank you that we can lean on you. And I don't know, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for our church. We've been going so long. Thank you for keeping us going. And uh, help us stay focused as uh, whatever happens, happens. I don't know. Keep us humble. And thank you for uh, the memory verses that uh, teach us that if we put you first, Lord, that your yes, promises Lord. say that you'll yes, take care of us, Lord. You take care of the birds of the air, Lord. So thank you, Lord, and have this money go where you will, Lord. And uh, just give us help. That's all we want. And we thank you for new bodies soon. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Negative, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us that. Yeah. Yeah. Hear that? It was all negative. Amen. No more Amen. spread of cancer. Amen. 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 So you're just waiting now to see the course of treatment? Yes. In terms of radiation? Okay. You look good. Amen. Amen. George, your prayers are working. Yes. Keep praying. Amen. I know. Amen. Thank you. Joe, it's good to see you in church. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Joe had a two weeks ago. Come on, Amen. Joe, Joe's going to write a book one day. Yes. You talk about a cat has nine lives. Joe's got about ten. Amen. I'm telling you, man, he's been through a lot, this guy. I'm glad to see yes, you. You look yes. good, man. Amen. I knew I'd get him last night because there was a boxing on Channel 5. And he's a boxing fan, so I said, Joe, this is a good fight. And Joe responded. He was watching that fight. I didn't see the end of that last one, though, the plank fight. Oh, look at that. Well, I'm glad to see you here. Amen. Amen. Ilona, Gianna, and of course, Rose. Kennedy, Bill's husband, Bill, Rose's husband. All right? Sing. Let's uh, give them a big, what, 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 what's the group called, Ashley? Where are you? Here. Ashley, <laughs> what, are you <laughs> what are you calling yourself? I called them the four horses. From behind the chair. What's that? Yeah, okay, you got to come up with a name. So you guys put your heads together, come up with a name, put your heads together. And then the first salon, I've got my hair cut, and it's been five minutes on my wife. <laughs> All right, come on down, group. Anonymous. We don't know who they are. They're just good. We love them. Give an amen. Amen. Blessing, holy blessing. The sanctified five. Oh! That's right. Oh, I'm right now. Good. 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 Redemption singers. <laughs> oh, I think the five five is good. I like it. I like it. What do you go down for? Guitar? You probably go down for some guitar? Yeah. He's got to make a grand entrance. Baby. 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 You thought you were bailing out, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell us 
extend the song for you sing it, please. Okay, I'll sing it. Um, <laughs> so we'll be singing Living Hope. I don't know if you, uh, you can probably hear me. Uh, we're going to be singing Living Hope again. And uh, that's the name of the song. Uh, I'll hear what it's about. But uh, basically, this is, <laughs> no, this is all we've practiced for this for a long time. And uh, it's all for God's glory. It's not for our. So. Uh, Sing it to that mic, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> it's on, right? You guys are messing it back to the top. You're good? good? Don't like that. Two seconds. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
One more time. Amen. That was good. That does me right. David, great. I did a great job. Hey, David. You said it. It's for God's glory. Amen. That's what it's for. You know, service like that, song like that for preaching, helps me. That helps me get it right. Get excited, get fired up for the message, and that's what that's what it's worship music is for. It's the very heart. Yeah, Amen. 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 you hear. Yeah, man. You know, the devil wants to keep from hearing the word of God. Yeah, sure. And hear us like that. It puts you at ease. You relax. The beautiful melody. The words are powerful. Mm -hmm. They sang it well. It's great, great. Anytime they want to sing, they're welcome. Amen. 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 Sanctified five. I like that. Amen. You have to take a vote on. It. I like it. <laughs> Herbie, how are you, buddy? How's the family? Well, and the little ones okay? Yes, sir. Only with a handful, but yes. <laughs> a little bit. And Hannah's doing okay? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, the little one's name again, I forget. Uh, Rachel. Rachel, right? Beautiful. Very good. Jelly? Yeah. We're good? <laughs> It's a great song. It really was. In honor of Valentine's Day, a message. Okay, thank you. Is that better? In honor of Valentine's Day, the message on love. Amen. The agape love as opposed to eros love. Yes, it, it's the true love. We're going to talk about it. Love has love is a deep, deep word. It's a big word. There's a lot of components to it. Mm -hmm. You can't really. I'm going to identify three aspects of it. There's more. There's no, I mean, you know. You know, make this two, three part series, but I honed down three of the main components of what love is, and I'll that's the message. So, uh, for that, I'd like you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 11. John chapter 11, and I'd like you to look at verse 1 when you find that. I'd ask you to stand up. Okay, John chapter 11, verse 1, the name of the message is called love. Pretty simple. What's not simple is trying to understand this. Oh, you, you'll understand it, but I mean, you think about it, and uh, it's deep. Uh, John 11, verse 1, let's read 1 to 5, and then we'll pray. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was, this clar clarifies it right here. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, now this tells you this before this actually happens. It happens in the next chapter, but it's giving you a heads up. That's the Mary. So it's Mary, Martha's sister, that anointed the Lord. Verse 3, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou what? Love lovest is sick. Is sick. <clears throat> when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He repeats that to affirm what they just said in verse 3, whom thou lovest is sick. And then again, the author says here that uh, John says that Jesus loved Martha, her sister, that's Mary, and Lazarus. Clearly, that's love is concerned. My first point is concerned. I'm going to give you some more things on that. But for the time being, meditate on that. Remain standing for a minute. Love is concerned. If you love somebody... You are concerned Amen. about them. Amen. You cannot love somebody genuinely and not be concerned about that person's well-being. That person's spiritual state, emotional state, physical state, whatever it might be. You have to be invested and concerned about a person, otherwise you don't love. The opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. And if you don't love somebody, you're indifferent to them because you don't really love them. It's like a stranger. 
hearing about somebody, you might intellectually say, oh, yeah, that person's sick, I feel bad. But it doesn't mean anything to you because it's not personal. Amen. But when someone's personal to you, and it's someone you love, that you're invested in that person's well-being because you are concerned for them. Concern and love go hand in hand. Remain standing, we'll pray, and then we'll read in verses 32 to 36. Let's pray. Help, please help us to hear from you, all right? Amen. Brother Zach, lead us in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you and we thank you, Father God, for this place. We thank you for Pastor. We ask you to fill him with your spirit, Father God, and open our ears to the message and open our hearts to the message. And I ask you, Father God, to shed this, your blood on us and cleanse us and write our spirits and make us the kind of people that you want us to be. Help us to hear these words, Father God, and to learn to love. To learn to love the way you loved us. Yeah. It's a depth that we don't understand. And I thank you, Father God, for what you did and how and you gave your son for us. And thank you so much for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That'll be my second point, Brother Zach. Of course. Right now, we'll look at its concern. And love is concern. I want you to stay in the same chapter with me and look at verses 32 to 36. Let's read a little bit. Chapter 11, John 11. I see John back there. I haven't seen you in a while. Got John back there, John. John. Chapter 11, verse 32 to 36. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Well, that's true. But Jesus had a different plan. You got that? Hmm. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Shortest verse in the Bible says what? Jesus, Jesus wept. wept. <clears throat> then the Jews, then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Now let me, let me just clarify something here and, and explain this to you, because it's a very really important portion of the scripture. Jesus, let's make this clear, and I don't want to miss my point on being concerned, because that's the issue. Jesus was crying here, weeping. And yeah, but he's concerned, no doubt. But you know what? He's weeping because of their unbelief. And they're not believing what he can do. He is the resurrection of the life. And, you know, he thinks they know that. And he's groaning in the spirit, because, in other words, all hope is lost. Uh, but like, like they just sang, uh, Jesus Christ, our living what? Hope. 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 And the hope was lost because Lazarus had been dead. And had Jesus come in time, Mary, Martha and Mary both say, our brother wouldn't have died. It's true. But because he already died, now something great is going to happen. A more powerful miracle is going to take place. But you have to believe that. So that's why the Lord was groaning. And he wept. But also, let's understand this. Perception is reality until revelation comes. I'll say it again. Perception is reality until the revelation comes. What does that mean? Well, it means this. The Jews saw Jesus weeping. You know what they said? Look how much he what? Loved him. Got it? Come on. Watch. He does love him. It said that in verse 5. I'm telling you the reason he was weeping is because they didn't believe he's going to raise him. But needless to say... The perception of the Jews there said, look, he's crying because he what? <coughs> he loves him. And that's perception and that's reality to them. And that's true. Jesus did love Lazarus. Somebody say amen. 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 And the, one of the demonstrations of love, one of the components of love is, is concern or compassion. If you love, you are concerned for somebody. Again, if you don't love somebody, you don't know them, you might feel sorry about their plight or about problems they're going through, but you won't have the same effect on you as when your own mm -hmm. yeah. someone connected to you, yeah. flesh, and blood, flesh and blood suffers, then you feel it more personal, mm -hmm. personally. Because right. it affects you, and it's emotional, and you're concerned about that person. Mm -hmm. That's what love is. That's one of the elements of love. You know, when you love somebody, again, you want to see their best interest. You're concerned for them all the time. You know, Jesus did love him greatly, and yet at the same time, Jesus let him die. Have you thought about that? Mm. See, he let him die because what he was going to do was going to be a greater miracle than had he been there to heal him. Listen, they had witnessed many healings, hadn't they? Mm. 
They saw blind people get get, get their sight back. They see lame people walk and, and, and deaf hear. They, they saw those things, okay, Dr. Jim? What they hadn't seen, with the exception of two other cases, was a dead person coming back to life. Now, he raises three people back to life. Please, Robin, listen. Three people back to life during his ministry. The most famous of those three is Lazarus. Amen. That's the most powerful one. Because other ones are, you know, you have to really study your Bible to realize there's two others. But this is the main one. He gets the most ink. He's dead for four days. Yeah. He didn't just, you know, happen to pass off a few hours later and the Lord came back and raised him up like the widow of son, Nain's son. This one's dead and buried. Four days. And the Lord said, I'm going to do something greater than getting there on time and healing him before he dies. Because Martha and Mary both said, if he had been here, he wouldn't have died. That's true. So the converse is also true. Even though I'm here late, I'm not on your time. I'm still going to work a great miracle, and you're going to see something that you've never seen before. Wow. You're going to see a dead man walking, amen? Yeah, amen? You're going to see this guy come back to life. And that's going to really allow many people to believe. What was the purpose of Jesus' miracles? To make people believe. That's, right. that's, that's right. the purpose. Jews to believe he's the Messiah, and others to accept him as that, and say, yes, I believe too. That's why he raised Lazarus. Many people came to know the Lord because of Lazarus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. They knew him. They knew he was dead. Mm -hmm. Now they see him alive. They're like, how could that be? How can I reconcile that? Faith in Christ, he raised him from the dead. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is a great concern. When you are concerned, I'm going to read this in a second. I'm going to use that right there. First John, read this real quick. Yeah. First John 3.17 says this. <clears throat> but also, but whosoever hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? First John 3, 17, that's our verse. So if you have something you could help somebody, and you claim to have the love of God in you, help them. Especially when you love them. And you're concerned about them. Listen, you know, when you're concerned and love somebody, you'll do anything for that person. Amen. That's love. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're not going to do that for a stranger. I understand that. But we're talking about for someone that you know and someone that you love and someone that you care about. Listen, love is concern. Yeah, that's right. love, there's a lot of things. Love is concern. It's concerned about the person. It's concerned about the well-being. It's concerned about the decisions they make in their life, how their life turns out, because it affects you because you love them. If you didn't love them, you'd be indifferent to them. Again, the opposite of love is indifference, not hate. I'm telling you that love has a lot of components. We cannot cover that all today. But I'm going to give you three. First one is concern. We had Valentine's Day just passed. And they, they make a big deal of it. But it's a day, and you, you know, you, you tell your, your wife, your husband, or whoever, you love them, and, and that's a good thing. Amen. Yes. I know you sell a lot of cards as a result of it, too, which is a good thing, too, right? Like cards. It's a, they, they, listen, ha Hallmark loves Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to tell you, the, the yeah. cards bought the most is Mother's Day. Second one is Valentine's Day. And if I'm not right, it sounds good. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, I know Mother's Day is number one. But Valentine's Day is a, is a big day. It's a big, you know, uh, call. And, but you know, you know why you're doing? You're expressing affection and love towards somebody, and that's a concern. Again, uh, uh, if we we listen. You, there's people that are dying on a daily basis from the flu. More people die from the flu than coronavirus. But there's people dying from coronavirus too. A lot of them are in China. Now, while I'm saying that, I don't mean to be. Cavalier, I'm saying a lot of people have died. I think 1,100 people. Is that right? 1,400? More than that? All right. What's been reported, Doc, about that? But I mean, I don't know who those 1,400 people, we don't know who they are. They live in Wuhan, China. But the fact of the matter is, they, they, they're, they're souls, they die. I don't know them. Yeah, there's a lot of disease and sadness that goes on throughout the world. People die all the time. And it doesn't impact our life directly other than what you read in the news feed. So many people have died from this disease today. And you go, oh my gosh, it's terrible. Yes. 
What's for dinner? Because mm-hmm. uh-huh. it doesn't. It's not real. To uh, I mean, it's real, but it's not. But if it's somebody you know, no, it's a different ball game. It's when Joe had the heart attack. It wasn't just a guy down the street. Although he lives down the street, it's, it's Joe. <laughs> Or oh, in Marianne at the cancer report. You know, yeah, then you, you're vested because you love them. You're concerned about what happens. When Rose texted me this morning about Bill with his foot was swollen with the gout, and she said it's very painful. I know from my mom that being very painful. And she had his toe was swollen, then it was his whole foot, and he didn't want to go to the doctor, whatever the case is. And, you know, Rose says he's very stubborn. But be that as it may, he's, he's had his health issues of late. And he's not a uh, spring chicken anymore, uh, Bill. And neither is Rose for that matter. But Rose, you wouldn't know that she still does as well as she does. She gets around. But you know what? The idea of being concerned for somebody is probably the first demonstration of love that you'll realize in your life. Your mother or father or someone close to you, when you were growing up, loved you. Amen. Amen. And they showed it, didn't they? Amen. They, they, they did things for you, that expression of love, because you knew they were concerned for you. Well, that's an expression of love. If you love somebody, you're concerned for them, number one. Number two, turn to uh, John 3.16. It's a verse that you know, but for those who don't know it, turn it and read it. <clears throat> Guys that I work with, that, you, that would make fun of me, and goof around on me, but then when somebody in their family got sick and they wanted prayer, you know what they'd come to? Me. They say, Can you pray for so and so? Bible boy, can you pray for them? And that's fine, I will. And that, that's okay. But do understand that, that anytime, listen, people, whether they're saved or not, doesn't matter who they are, okay? The worst mafia, they, they love their family. Well, hello. Don't mess with the family either. Don't mess with the family. Familia. And numero uno. So they'll take care of their own. But at the same time, doesn't mean they love God. They're just taking care of their own. Listen. There, there are certain people that are involved in illicit crime like that, that are good family men, mm-hmm. if you believe that. They, they would be considered. Mm-hmm. Story of Sam and Bill Gravano, who my sister knew from where, where she worked, or the story of the Iceman, who I think someone here actually knew or met, and he, you know, his wife and daughter had no idea he was involved in that kind of crime. Had no idea. Go off to work with a suitcase, dressed like this. And she, he told the family that he was in real estate sales. And he had a boatload of money and he you know, took care of them. But they, they didn't know. It was a long time. They didn't question him. Okay. Until it came out what he did. So while he was doing terrible things on the outside, he took care of his family. You can put that up now, Mark. It's that time, Mama, goes hot, cold. That's what happens. And it's tough to keep it. But here's the thing now. Love is concerned, so that's the first point. Second point, John 3, 16, most of you know this by heart. If you don't read it, for God so loved the world, take a look at it. He gave his only begotten son, whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, look, look, watch. Love is concerned, love is going to give. Love is going to cost you something. Amen. Love will always cost you something. What did it cost God the Father? It cost him his son. Yes. Yeah. It cost him his son. What did it cost Jesus Christ? His life. Mm-hmm. His life. Say, he's eternal. He's God. I know that. He knew that. But he still had to go through the process of death. Yeah. And the pain. And he knew about it. And he still went through it. That cost him. Him, his earthly life. He did not lose his eternal life. You can't take that from him. He's Jesus Christ. He's sinless. We just looked at that in Sunday school. But needless to say, he still bore it as a man. One mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who bore our pain on a tree. He took our sins in him who knew no sin. 
But at the same time, understand this, that it cost him his life. When you love somebody, true love will cost you something. So it'll cost you your time, your effort, your energy, your mind, your heart, your emotions, and your wallet. Especially on Valentine's Day, right? It's going to cost you things. That don't, there's no way around it. That's love. It cost God his only son. Here is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Amen. Sent his Amen. son to be the payment of our sins. He, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why did he give him? He knew he was going to be brutalized. Mm -hmm. He did that because love costs. That's right. Here, bringing to mind my dear friend, Brother Soche, who's now an evangelist. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read you his definition of love, which I thought was beautiful. Oh. It says this, love is the execution of conduct toward an object that always has the best interest of the object at the expense of the lover. Mm -hmm. Get that? Yeah. Love is the execution of conduct toward an object that is always in the best interest of the object at the expense of the lover. Mm -hmm. At the expense of the lover. Mm -hmm. yeah, wow. Cost. Mm -hmm. It's at the lover's cost, the lover's expense, mm -hmm. to do anything he or she can do for that person whom they love. Mm -hmm. Love costs. Mm -hmm. It costs God his son. It costs Jesus Christ his life. And you, when you love somebody, it'll cost you, like I said, your time, your heart, your mind, your energy. Yeah. And you're invest. That's why people today, listen carefully. I mean, this, is, this is deep, man. Why, you know why people today don't want to get married a lot of times? They don't want the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the cost of the wedding either. I'm talking about they don't want the cost involved because they know they have to be invested. Yes. That's right. They can't just like, hey, you know, let's hang out together and if things go south, you go your way and go mine. Let's have let's be friends with benefits. <laughs> right? Come on. Am I speaking English? They don't want to make a commitment. They don't want it's gonna cost them something. Did they say I do? And a lot of times they don't know what they're doing to say I do. Because it's going to cost a lot. And if they're not ready for the challenge, they're going to learn the hard way. Or not make it. And I hope they make it. You desire that couples get married with the right intention and heart to, 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 to do right. and do right, and, and Well, it's going to cost us something. But if you realize that and you go into it, then it makes sense and you can get through there. See, David, I'll give you a good example in the Bible. When David was going to buy Ornan's threshing floor, or Aruna, his other name, in 2 Samuel 24, what's important to know is that David had just committed a terrible sin. And it wasn't the Bathsheba sin. That was a terrible sin, too. This sin was numbering the people. Yeah. Say, so what was terrible about that? Well, I guess you see that David had beaten Goliath as a young boy. He saw the power of God work through him to beat a 10-foot giant that should have smashed David in a million pieces, and he beat him. He, as the song says, he brought a rock to a sword fight. <laughs> and he beat him with that rock. Well, you know what? Think about this. He beats him, which is unbelievable, and then eventually elevates him to be a king. But watch this. He elevates him to become king. While David is king, years later, he says, hey, let's take a census of our army, Joab. Go, go tell me how many men will fight me at, at any given notice. It came out to about 1.7 million. And he says, go, go get it. Uh, 1.2 million. Was. Go, go take a set. Yeah, about that, about that. Go take a census. And uh, Job says, Job says, uh, no, don't, 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 don't do that. It's not a good idea. Uh, I'm the king. What I say goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it? <clears throat> so Joab, who, who is, a, is a mixed character. Mm -hmm. yeah. he's, up, he's, he's good and bad. Mm -hmm. You know what Job is like? Yeah. He's like you. Yeah. <laughs> good morning to you, too. Joab is like, everybody here, you do some good, you do some bad. You put one foot in, put one foot out. Sometimes it's like that. You're not always what you should be. And Joab gave him some good advice there, and other times he didn't. Okay, well, in this case, he was right. And David said, be quiet up the king. Listen to me. All right, David, I told you. And David, David orders him. He gets the census. And while that census is coming in, then he finished taking it. Mm -hmm. Plague goes out throughout the land. 
First Chronicles 21, 70,000 people get killed. Do you hear me? 70,000. That's more than Vietnam War. That's more than 10 years of Vietnam War. And it wasn't 10 years. It was a plague like that immediately. And it was the worst plague God smote his own people with in the Bible. And watch this. Does it because David just what, took a census? I mean, Lord, really, what's the big deal about that? Because you're trusting in your arm of flesh, not in me. Mm -hmm. And you knew better, David. You saw what I did with you, right? Mm -hmm. That's what happened. But watch what happens. Mm -hmm. Now David realized that. He cries out to God, Oh, Lord, please, these poor sheep, they didn't do anything wrong. It's me. Forgive me. And he cries out to God. And God says, Okay, I'm going to give you three choices. And you know the choices. Some of you know the choices. Three days, sword of Lord. Three months, hands of the enemy. Three years famine. Sometimes your decisions that are wrong don't give you good options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make mistakes. Am I, is this on today? <laughs> I'll repeat that. Sometimes when you make bad decisions, you're left with bad options. Yes. Come on, think about that. And there was no good options there. Three years famine, no. Three months when you turned over the hands of the enemy, no. All right, three days, sir, Lord, I'll take that one. I'll fall at the mercy of God. I'll pull the famous no low contender. I, 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 I plead, plead mercy, Lord. And he did. And 70,000 people died. I can't imagine what would happen had it been the other two options. Point being this, though, at the end of that, when David finally goes to make an offering at Ornan's threshing floor, because when Ornan is threshing wheat, when, when the angel is killing people, he sees Ornan and he stops. And then at that moment, David wants to buy that because he realized that's a special place. Hallowed ground. Mm -hmm. Some of you know what that became. Mm -hmm. Became the ground for the temple. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, at the moment, David doesn't know that. He just knows it's hallowed ground. He wants to buy it. Well, here's what David says. Watch. <clears throat> he buys the threshing floor for Ornan, and he says, Will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing? The answer is no. So David bought the threshing floor. You know what he said? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna offer sacrifice at something that didn't cost me something. It's gonna cost David to buy that threshing floor because he didn't want and Ornay was willing to give it to him. Come on, here's the story. Ornay said, I'll give you everything. I give it all. He was willing to give it all. But then, but then David says, no, no, no. It's going to got to cost me something. I'm the one that caused this mess. Mm. His love for the people realized, I can't just make a sacrifice here on something you give me. It's got, i got to buy it. In other words, prove my worth. Mm. It cost him something. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Amen. Am I making myself clear? Yeah. Amen. You're gonna, it's going to cost you something. And by the way, David bought the threshing floor. It became the temple. It eventually became the house with the ground where they built Solomon's temple. But he had, he had it cost him. He bought it with so many shekels of gold and silver. Point is, he, it cost him something. When you, when you love somebody, or love something like social definition, or like it says in John 3, 16, how oh God so loved the world, that he gave, love is always, is always linked together eternally with giving. It's love gives, lust takes. That's right. Amen. Oh, did you hear that? Love give, lust what? Takes. Takes. Yep. Oh, lust between lovers is part of the benefit of being married. But lust, apart from that, it will take something from you, whereas love will give. Right. See, if a marriage is to work, I got to do a wedding in a couple of weeks, and I tell them, as I tell all the couples I've do, done weddings with, that I'm going to give you a formula for success for marriage. What you do with it is up to you. Right. That's right. I, I, I said, I said every wedding I've ever done, and it's not just that a couple getting married. Many couples that are there listening or maybe thinking of getting married, and I'm saying this will work for you too. Even for couples that are married, the company said, "Hey, Pastor Joe, that was really good. That helped me in my relationship. Good. Mm -hmm. You're listening. Because yeah. the formula is for everybody. Yeah. Just a couple that's getting married, it's going to be for them specifically, but it's for everybody ultimately." 
because it's the same formula. And love requires sacrifice. Again. Love will cost you something. Love costs God his own son. Now listen, I don't know what's going to cost you in life, but when you love somebody and you go out on a limb to do what you have to do, like I said, it's going to cost you some of your time and your heart, your mind, your energy, your money, a lot of things. It's going to cost you. And a lot of times people don't want to make that commitment because they don't like the cost involved. So I'll love you at arm's distance. And tell you I love you. And never demonstrate it. Materialism. So when you, listen, when you speak love and say I love you, those are powerful words. Sometimes they're spoken quickly. And they're not really meant. And other times they're spoken and they're meant. And it's backed up by actions. Uh, sometimes a person might not say I love you, but they demonstrate love through what they do. Amen. I, I, I'll, I'll give you a story. Grandma Kitty. Kitty, mommy, she calls by my name, sister, Chloe, you want, uh, nanny, nat, grandma, mommy, kitty, aunt kitty, uh, uh, I'm not, sister, come on, amen, say amen. amen, you know, mommy, you know what mommy's good at saying, that he or she is nice, she feels, she finds good in everybody, and she says, you know, I, I love them, and she generally does, she loves them, she loves everybody. Don't love Judas, though. <laughs> Don't love him. He's not a good guy. She loves everybody. But you know what? You know what happened one day? She told a funny story to, to my wife. And it's funny because, you know, we know all the stories. So we think. And then she comes up with stories that we never heard. I said, I never heard that one. Well, one of the stories is her mother was the one to say, I love you. Yeah, man. She didn't say that like Kitty says. So Delia, the mama, Never said that she loved her. And then one day, I think, the story got right. She said, do you, do you love me? Yeah. And he said, well, that's a, that's a dumb thing to say. Mom, you never say, you never you, say you love me. Yeah, he said, well, that's a dumb thing. I prove I love you by what I do for you, right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you hear that? So, you know, those, you know, the mom, her mom didn't say, I love you. She goes, and she says, well, do you love me? He goes, well, of course, that's a dumb thing for I love you. Look what I do for you. She demonstrated it by her actions, not just the words. So nothing wrong with saying I love you. But if you say it, back it up. Back it up. I've told my wife I love her. I tell her I love her every day. And she knows that. And I've demonstrated that. So she knows what I say is not hypocritical. Same with you. So when you tell me you love me, you mean it. <laughs> So here's the thing you got to remember. Love will cost you something in relationships, in a marriage, in church relationships, in business relationships. When you love somebody or something, it's going to cost. Listen, people that love, give you another illustration. People that love their craft, whatever that might be, might be music, might be athletics, might be scientists. They, they have to invest a lot of time. It's going to cost them a lot of time and learning to perfect their craft. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. they love it. It's going to cost them something. Like my cousin down in Florida, who retired now, Albert. Albert Fazio, he's my first cousin, about 34 years older than me, and a brainiac. He's another brainiac. I got some brainiacs. I got some brainiac blood going through my veins, man. So, I mean, he, he was good. Boy, he graduated 4.0 in Manhattan College, same thing. Got, had, had his pick where he going. He went to Boeing, stayed there for 35 years. He was a NASA guy, top engineer, top engineer. Top engineer for the space shuttle program. 13, he signed off on 13 engineers. They came to him. A thousand page manifest for the flights. Oh, yeah, tell me these things. But he didn't like talking about it. He'd rather talk about the Bible. Talk, talk, pray with me and talk about the Word of God. He loved that, right? He's a good Christian, my cousin Albert. But you know what? He put a lot of time and effort into that. He didn't just become a doctor because he's smart. He put a lot of time into it. You didn't just become an oral surgeon because you're a big, tall guy. You can beat somebody up if they didn't give you the degree. Pete said, I'm going to be an oral surgeon and I'll break your neck. No, no, no. He studied hard. Right, Dr. Jim? Go back to school at 50 years old to become a chiropractor. At 50 years old, or something like that. I, I listen. And you know what? It's that anybody else, you, you have to learn your craft. It takes time. It costs you your time, 
your mind, your energy. So, Pastor Joe, how do you know the Bible so well? It cost me a lot of time. You know what I've done for 30 years to read the Bible? Once, twice, no. A lot of times. Why? That's what I do. It, it's my life's work. It's what I. It, it's going to cost me something. Listen, we'll see the All-Star basketball game. Some of you won't watch it. Some will. I will. Tonight, the All-Star basketball game's on. Some of you don't care about it. I like it. But now when I watch those guys, the watch, the, you, you're going to see some tremendous athletes doing some amazing things that unless you play the game, you could understand how really good they are, and it takes a lot of time and effort and practice to get to that level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, you watch the Olympics when they come around, 2020 in the summer, and you'll see some amazing feats of yeah. athletic activity. And he's, they didn't just decide to become an Olympic athlete and walk out there. These are hours and years of, of dedication and practice because they loved it. And they gave of themselves to perfect something. They're chasing something. I'm not saying whether it's good or bad. That's just the fact of it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yes, amen. Look at that famous swimmer, that Mark Phelps, that broke Mark Spitz's record. Oh, all those gold medals, that guy's got enough gold, he could, he could, he could support Fort Knox, amen? amen? And you know, with all that, you know what he did? He took, his whole life was dedicated to swimming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And became the best in the world. It's like anything else, you dedicate your life. It's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. When you love someone in a marriage, it's going to cost you your time and your effort your mind, your heart, to make sure that that works out. Amen? Amen. That's love. Love is going to be considerate, concerned. It's going to be, it's going to cost you something. And lastly, it's going to correct you. Look at uh, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, in the middle of your Bible, should be easy enough to find. Just kind of open your Bible to the middle part and look for Proverbs 3. When you find it, look up this way. Proverbs 3, verse 11. So, what do we have so far? We have love is concerned. We have love costs. Lastly, love corrects. Okay? Love corrects. Like I said, love has other elements, other components to it. I can't cover all of them this morning. But I'm going to give you... Three of the basic ones. Three of the, I find, the most salient. Okay, you like that? Mm -hmm. And this one corrects. That's an important part of love. Yeah. Look at Proverbs 3, verse 11. For whom the Lord loveth, he what? Correcteth. Oh, Proverbs 3, 11. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I yeah. 12. My bad. Let go 11. My son, verse 11, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. There it is. For whom the Lord loveth, he what? Correct. Correcteth. Correct. Even as the father, the son, in whom he delights. He corrects. Love corrects. Love costs. Love is concerned. It's true of all things. Love has many components to it. So, in all the, all the new Bible versions, and I don't care. Take your pick. Just put the King James by itself. Take any other. It doesn't matter. With it. Just name one. It doesn't matter. It's the, it's the alphabet. The Bible of the alphabet. The ABCs, the NAVs, the CBAs. <laughs> it doesn't matter. With it. Just pick one out and read what it says in 1 Corinthians 13. It'll say charity and it'll say love. It'll say love. Every Bible but the King James Bible will say love. 1 Corinthians 13, right? Yes. Right. Right. Every Bible, listen to me, will say love, charity instead of love. Yeah. I mean, love instead of charity. Yeah. It, charity, what's the difference between charity and love? Watch. Charity is a function of love. It's a tentacle of love. It's a component of love. It's a sub-part of love. It's a subset of love. Am I making myself clear? Yes. Yes. And charity never corrects. Charity never corrects. Mm -hmm. Love corrects. So it's not the same word. It's spelled differently as a different meaning. It is an element of love. It's love in action, it's charity. But charity never corrects. Charity just gives. Love gives, but love also what? Corrects. Because whom the Lord loveth, 
he correcteth. And it says in Hebrews, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receives. Amen. So it's the same idea that chastening, that correcting, is a function of love. If God loves you, does he love you? Yes. Yes. Are you accepted in the beloved? Yes. yes. Are you accepted in the beloved? Yes. Amen. Well, then God loves you and you're accepted in the beloved, he's going to chasten you. Amen. He's going to correct you. If he doesn't correct you, you'd be an illegitimate child. That's what it says in the Bible. You, you could use the word. It's a B word. Yeah, wow. you could use it on me right now. But I'm says what it says. You're an illegitimate child. And listen, here's the thing. God loves you. He's God who corrects you because that's part of the function of love. Thank you, Lord. So if you, that's right. If you don't correct someone, you don't love them. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be God over them. You have to correct everything they say or do. But depending on your relationship with the person, especially if it's your child. Amen. See, God gave children to parents, not the other way around. Amen. He gave the children to the parent. So the parent is told to correct the child. Yes, sir. So if you don't correct, someone else correct them. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Amen. That's right. They're not going to care. That's right. Tell the tell the tell the tell the tell the correction officer when you did wrong that you're a child of God. And then you, you didn't mean to that's nice. Get over here. Boom. Yes. Right. Hey, Big Louie's not here today. He's on vacation in Costa Rica. But Big Louie, he sits in the back. He's our, uh, he's our resident police officer. Mm -hmm. Hey, 21 years, uh, New York City, NYPD's finest. Wow. Mm -hmm. Louie. I know Louie many years ago in the city. Got him a job before he became a police officer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Louie is a big boy. First of all, we don't mess with Louie. <laughs> Second of all, he's a sergeant in New York City Police Department. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he could probably tell you stories about things that he's experienced. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like to get him. He's very shy, but maybe we'll get him yeah. one day and have you a little testimony to the church about some things he's experienced. But he had to tell you something else that correction comes in many forms. So when your mom or dad correct you, kids, it's for your benefit. Amen. Amen. When your pastor corrects you, it's for your benefit. Amen. When someone loves you and corrects you, it's for your benefit. When someone that doesn't love you, they're just doing their job, i.e. correctional officer or police officer, doing their job. They don't necessarily love you. They're just correcting you because that's what the law says. Amen. Amen. But when they love you and they correct you, it's coming from a place of love. See, correction can be viewed differently depending on your understanding of what love is. But when you realize that God, as a good parent, has to correct us at times, especially when we, like sheep, have gone what? <laughs> Astray. Right. Peter, did God love Peter? Yes. yes. Sure he did. He's an apostle. Yes. Peter was one of the main apostles. I mean, think about it. You got Paul later on, but Peter, the beginning of Acts is, is the, the book of Peter. <laughs> it's Peter's, uh, Peter's time to shine. Then eventually it, it, it morphs to Paul, and, yes. and Paul takes over and, and goes with it. And the rest of the book of Acts is all about Paul. But Peter starts out in the book of Acts, powerful. Amen. And Peter is, is, is one of the main apostles. Amen. Amen. And Peter has got the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Not the Catholic Church, Peter. <laughs> no, yeah, because they, they gave that. He had the key to the Jew and the key to the Gentile. He opened up the door to the Jew in Acts chapter 2. Yep. Talked to him in church. How many got saved? 3,000. Did you ever say it louder? 3,000 3, Jews, right? And then... And then Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, mm -hmm. the Italian, gets in. <laughs> hey, that's it, man, the Italian got in, Acts chapter 10. And he gets in, and that's the door to the Gentiles. So the Jew, the Gentile, Peter's powerful. Watch this. Peter, the same one, had said, I don't even know him. After three and a half years. I mean, I know he was mixed up, upset, didn't want to fight. He's going to kill, chop a guy's ear off, Malchus, then put it back on. He says, get a sword, get a sword. Then he just put it away. And Peter's like, what do you want me to do? He's like, ah, frustrated. But be that as it may, he still says three times. I don't know who the guy is. He heard when, when, when that rooster crowed the second time. The Lord said at the Cox crow the second time. You look deny me thrice, three times. The second time that rooster crowed is a, right after he had denied him three times, and he wept bitterly. Listen, mm -hmm. he yeah. wept bitterly. Yeah. You know what God had to do? God corrected him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what Jesus corrected him in John twenty one? Well, well after that fact, yeah. after the resurrection, mm -hmm. he denies him. He gets crucified. Mm -hmm. Then after the resurrection, and Peter's all good now. He said, Peter, come here. Mm -hmm. 
Do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. No, no, if there was a pause of time, maybe 10 minutes, I don't know, maybe longer, maybe less. Well, hey, Peter, I have another question for you. Peter, do you love me? Yeah, Lord, I love you. Feed my lambs. Then he waits again. Hey, Peter, yes, Lord, do you love me? Well, sure, Lord, you asked me that twice already. <laughs> yeah, tell me one more time, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. He corrected him. Why? He denied him three times. And now he says, remember, you love me. Love corrects. Love, you and me? Love corrects. He corrected Peter. Not because he didn't love him. Because he loved him and he used him greatly, like I said, to open up the door to Gentiles and to the Jew. He loved Peter greatly and was going to help him, but he first had to correct him. Right. Yeah. Sometimes before we are used of God, we need to be corrected by God to know what we need to do and to stop us from our foolish ways. God corrects us out of love because that's a component of love. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll even know myself. Amen. Listen to this. When you take a test and you, you get, maybe you get a 95 on a test. That's really good. Yeah. I mean, you get a, I got 95 when I was in school. I was happy with that, man. Yeah. They didn't come that often, but I was happy with it. <laughs> I didn't really try. Believe me. I just got by, man. I, I was out playing basketball and baseball, but I would breeze through it. I would get study quickly. And when I didn't know it, asked my brother. John, help me out here. I didn't read this book. Give me a quick synopsis of the book. And I had a really good memory, so I remember it really good. Take this. I'm not telling you to do that. Don't copy me. <laughs> read the book. Read the assignment. I learned the hard way. Anyway, get back to my story. Watch this. When you take a test, you get 95. That's really good. So maybe you got one wrong, maybe two wrong. Depends on how many questions there were. So that's terrific, but you, you still got a couple wrong. And if you get corrected, then you'll know the answer to that the next time. Right. Doesn't mean you didn't do well as a Christian if you're getting corrected. You're doing well, but God still corrects us. Not just because we're evil, not because you're doing bad, you're not living in the world, you're not doing dope on the side. You're doing, you're loving God. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, don't know, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm just saying. You're doing right, right? Amen. I mean, hope so. I don't know. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah. It's quiet here. <laughs> Are you doing right? Yeah. 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 Well, some of you doing right. I don't know about the rest of you. But I tell you what. And when you're doing right, you still could use a little improvement Amen. to do righter, right. <laughs> to do better, to do gooder. <laughs> Come on, right? Listen, God, you know, God will correct you to help you to get to a better place in your life. Amen. If he ignores you, you'd be a child that he's not your father. You wonder why some people do certain things and get away with it? I wonder too because maybe they're not connected to the same God I'm connected to. Because the God I'm connected to, well, you, yes. listen, he might let you get away with stuff for a while, but you keep pushing the envelope, you're going to get spanked. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And even if you're doing right and you're growing and then you're complaining or murmuring or doing stuff that nobody else would know but you, God will still deal with you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You. Why? God loves you. God loves you. Exactly. God is concerned about you. Love will cost and love will correct you. Amen. Listen, those are just some components of God's love. It's deeper. There's more, of it, more to it. But I think, in a nutshell, I've covered the main components. Would you agree with that? Amen. <laughs> From the Bible. Now, you know, any other love, uh, the emotional love that you see in romantic movies, yeah, there's a the component of love there because they're concerned. Still goes back to concern. It's the eros love, not the agape love. It still works, though. It's all part of the love. You know, love, again, has many elements to it. And you, there's, there's familial love. There's all types of love, expressions of love. But, I mean, primarily from God's perspective, love is concerned. Love will always cost you. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Oh, yeah. It's going to always cost you. Amen. And finally, like we're looking at, love is going to correct you. Not because it doesn't love you, because it loves you. You, know, you have to ask yourself, you do something that you know is really wrong, you don't, and, you, and God doesn't do anything to you, ask yourself, why? 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 When you take communion, Lord's Supper, you, you are to judge yourself, lest you be judged by the Lord. 
So we had communion a few weeks ago, and you put it out there. Tell God what you're up to, and ask God to forgive you. He will judge yourself. Correct yourself. It's always good to correct yourself. Amen. It's like giving a test, and it's a, it's a you grade yourself, grade your own test. Well, be honest, grade it. We did the we did the uh, def defensive drivers class, Phil, a few months ago, whatever. And now we've been doing it for every three years, for the last twelve years or whatever. So we know the guy that comes, uh, you know, buddy at work. What's his name? Dave? Steve. 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 Steve Davis, right? And Steve's funny guy goes through it, and he and he said, "There's gonna be a quiz. It's you're not gonna be graded. You have to grade yourself." Yeah. <laughs> and he asks, "How many thirty questions? About that? Yeah. About thirty. Yeah. And I typically get like two or three wrong. Even though I I get them all almost all right. I wish to get the age of how many yeah. like buckling the back the seat, the back. And I don't remember that stuff. Does not really relevant to me? You sit in my car, put, his, put a seatbelt on. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Put a seatbelt on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, not, I'm transporting little kids. It's a little different. I don't understand that. Just put a seatbelt on. Yeah. Yeah. Mom's got little kids. You've got to think about that stuff, right? Yeah. All right, so, the, so you get a few things wrong. They have to listen again with the age to write it down. So you get corrected. God wants you to correct us. Yeah. And you should be correcting yourself. Uh -huh. Ask God to help you. So with that said, Let's stand up and ask the Lord to help us and come play something for us. <laughs> okay, heads bowed, eyes closed. Ash is going to play us something. I'm going to give you an opportunity to come talk to the Lord. Love, we're talking about God's love this morning and, and, and what love is in general. Love is concern. No doubt God is concerned about you. If God, if you love God and God loves you. You should be concerned about God. God's concerned about you. And if you're saved, you're accepted in the beloved. Secondly, God, God's love costs him something, and love will always cost you something. And thirdly, because God loves you, he's duty-bound by his word to correct you when you're not doing right or when you're doing right and you need to be corrected to do better. So that's, that's the upshot. And with that said, Ashley, play something. If you want to come speak to the Lord, I suggest you come down to the altar this morning, talk to the Lord. We all, let me tell you this, we all, everybody here, could use a dose of God's love. We all could learn to love, like Brother Zach said in his prayer, a little bit more. We don't love the way God loves. There's no way. That's why he's God. But we all could learn to express that love maybe differently. Maybe you have to work on being concerned. Maybe you have to accept that it's going to cost you something. Maybe you have to accept that Part of love is going to be corrective in nature, and you need to be corrected or correct yourself. So again, don't you come pray. Come to the altar and pray. Ashley's going to play, and we'll just wait a few minutes and come pray. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to do that. Once you come to the altar and pray, and ask the Lord to save your soul. Come to the Lord and say, Jesus, save my soul. I don't know where I'm going to go when I die. You saw God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, did he love you? Did you accept that gift? Come pray. Ashley's playing, church. We can wait here for a little while. We can wait or we can come down now. It's up to you. But I think you need to come down to pray. You really should. It's a good thing to be in church. It's a better thing to be at this altar. Let's come down to pray right now. Ask God to help you. Help me. Help all of us. Love better. Understand God's love. It's deep. I mean, I can't. I'm not. This isn't the end all be all on love can't expound it any more than that. I gave you what I thought appropriate points, but Holy Ghost got to do something in your life. Come talk to the Lord. Ask Him to save you if you need to be saved. Lord. Ask Him to help you in your life to be that better Christian.
the world. Four seven, nice song. Four seven, let's close with that. Jesus, good choice, Ashley. Jesus is all the world to me. Amen. amen. You love him, say amen. Amen. Oh, he is. Oh. Try it again. You guys love Jesus? Yes. Sir. Come on. Amen. He's all the world, so sing it out. Hard oh, one, Jesus 470. That's enough to chew on. Yeah, but amen. if you love God, you'll obey Him. And when you don't, ask God to forgive you and give you the develop that love in your heart the right way. All right? Yeah. So with that, let's pray. Ask God to dismiss us with His blessing. Um, Brother Terry, how about you close the word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the message today. It's something that in many ways most of us should be able to comprehend and relate to as we've received or given love somehow in some mm -hmm. way. and uh, But no way have we reached the love that you've given, Lord, to, yeah. to that extent. No we way. just pray that we'd understand it more, that we, you might get from us what, what uh, we need, Lord, in, in return. We just thank you for the message today. Help us to be better for it. In your precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.